There's this great free resource out there that many people aren't taking advantage of. It's something that most homes can access absolutely free, and that's over-the-air TV. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. What year is this? I know, I know, it sounds odd talking about over-the-air TV this day and age, but I found a way to modernize it and make it more accessible with a little bit of hardware and a little bit of software from Plex. I've been using Plex for almost 10 years, and one of the features that isn't talked about that much is one of my favorites, and that's live TV and DVR. Now, I'm not talking about the free channels that Plex offers, although we'll be talking about those a little bit later. I'm talking about over-the-air channels like ABC, NBC, PBS, and many others to watch sports, local news, and more. And with ATSC 3.0, or next-gen TV, rolling out in some areas, you can be sure you're going to get the clearest broadcast possible with up to 4K resolution, uncompressed, when over the air versus 1080p compressed like most TV providers. You also need a few simple things that I will cover in this video so you can start watching and recording live TV today. So full disclosure, Plex is the sponsor of this video and I wanna thank them for asking me to share my deep dive on live TV and DVR with Plex. If this is the first time we're meeting, hey, I'm Techno Tim and I run a tech YouTube channel about home labs and home servers, self-hosting, networking, home automation, and even a little programming. I love diving deep into topics like this one today about setting up live TV and DVR on your Plex media server. So with a TV tuner, an antenna, and a Plex Pass, you can turn your media server into a powerful DVR to record your favorite shows or watch them live, even on the go. You can record any show in your area, whether that be sports, local news, or your favorite TV series and watch it from any device. Plex has apps for mobile devices, smart TVs, gaming consoles, Apple TV, and the web, and more. <laughs> it's hard to find a device that doesn't support Plex. Watching live TV is as simple as launching the app and picking a channel. This will stream that channel from your Plex media server to your device. After live TV starts, you could pause or even rewind live TV. But if you start watching something that's currently being recorded, you have the option to watch from the beginning or watch live. If you choose to watch from the start, you can skip through commercials and get caught up to the live broadcast. This is a little life hack I use to watch something that's live without the commercials. For something you've already recorded, there's also this awesome feature that will allow you to skip commercials or remove them altogether. This is a great time saver and we'll get this set up today too a little bit later. So one of the best parts of Plex Live TV is you get the best EPG out there. Now, EPG stands for Electronic Programming Guide, and it lists all the shows for all channels, along with some additional data like episode information and more. It's how I know that Jeopardy! is on NBC at 4.30 local time, or that the episode of Nature is a rerun. It's also what helps populate their powerful search and live TV section. Now, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a solid EPG when using a DVR. Without accurate data, you could schedule the wrong show or miss your show altogether. The EPG is even interactive on some channels, giving you a picture-in-a-picture -picture guide while you browse the guide looking for the next thing to watch. And if you only watch a handful of local channels, you can add channels to your favorites so you can quickly access them. Flex Live TV lets you prioritize your recordings so that you don't get in trouble recording a rerun of Nature instead of the latest episode of The Bachelor. <laughs> don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> We'll talk more about the EPG, recording priority, or how not to miss your favorite show when scheduling your recordings a little bit later. So what do we need in order to have our very own DVR? Now, I know this all sounds complicated, but it's much easier than you think. You'll need a couple of things, all of which I use in my own home and have been recording TV for years. So you can be sure that this setup will also work for you. First, we're going to need a Plex server and a Plex Pass. Next, you'll need a TV tuner and an antenna. I've used lots of TV tuners in the past, but the best tuner by far is one from Silicon Dust, and it's the HD Home Run Flex 4K. This nice little device sits on your network and converts a TV signal into a video stream so that your Plex media server can consume it and even change the channels when requested. This one in particular has four tuners inside that allows you to watch or record up to four channels at once. This one also supports the new ATSC 3.0 next-gen TV we talked about a little bit earlier, so it's future-proof. Another important thing you'll want to have is an antenna that connects to your tuner. Antennas come in all shapes and sizes, and depending on where you live, you might be able to get by with a small indoor antenna. If you're in the US, there's this great site out there to help you determine your distance from the TV towers, which might help you choose the right antenna. You can visit the site, enter your location, and see how far away you are from TV towers, their location, and get an estimate of the signal strength to your location. Based on this map and information, you can make a better decision about the antenna you choose. 
But here's my recommendation for choosing an antenna. If you're close to TV towers and you want something low profile, or you live in an apartment or a condo and can't put an antenna outside, go with this flat antenna which is thin, low profile, and can be placed in a window or even on the wall. This flat antenna from Channel Master should work great if most TV towers are in the green or yellow. But if you're further away from the TV tower or you just want the best reception, I recommend picking up something like this antenna's direct antenna that can be used indoors or outdoors. Now it's not the best looking antenna, but it has great range and will work better than the flat antenna if you can hide it or if you aren't concerned about the aesthetics. Either way, you'll want to mount it somewhere in your home. The higher the better. Outdoors or an attic will work best. Now, I got lucky when I moved into this house because the previous owner installed this massive long-range antenna in the attic and ran coax all the way down to the basement. <laughs> I got pretty lucky. Having one in the attic and above the trees and other houses is one of the best places for an antenna. So once you have your antenna and tuner, go ahead and connect your tuner to the network and connect your antenna to the coaxial terminal and then finally connect the power to the tuner. Now, a word of caution, you might be tempted to buy an amplifier, but I would recommend against it until you truly know that you have a weak signal. You run the risk of introducing noise and interference. We'll see this later, and from there, you can determine if you need a signal amplifier or not. So once your tuner's on the network, visit the tuner's webpage by typing in the IP address in your browser. Here, you'll see a landing page for your device. If you see a message to update your firmware, I would update it before continuing. It only takes a minute and plus, who doesn't love updating firmware? <laughs> I do. Once it's updated, you can see the tuner status and more information about your tuner. Next, we want to see which channels our tuner can detect. You can do this by going into the channel lineup and clicking detect channels. This will scan for a list of channels you can pick up using your antenna. Now, your mileage may vary depending on your area and how close you are to the TV towers, but it's a good idea to compare these results to what you'd expect. If you aren't seeing the channels you expect, you might need to adjust your antenna or think about a signal amplifier. However, I'll show you how to check the signal strength here in a little bit. One thing you might have noticed is this little plug that I have connected to my HD home run. This is a signal filter that will filter out LTE and 5G signals from the line. I've noticed that as more cell phone towers go up, the more they can interfere with my antenna. So I pop this little filter on to filter out the frequencies. And if you're wondering what interference looks like, it's this weird pixelated blocking <laughs> that you sometimes see when watching TV. Now, this filter isn't going to magically make channels appear out of nowhere or boost the signal. It's there to just take away noise created by the towers. Once we've got our tuner all set up, make note of the IP address because we'll need this later for configuring Plex. So now that we have our TV tuner and antenna set up, we can now configure this in Plex. You'll need to sign into your Plex media server and then go into settings. In the manage section, you should see live TV and DVR. Here you'll want to configure your new tuner. When you try to add a new tuner, it will try to search for your tuner, and in most cases, it will find your device. But if it doesn't, you can manually add your device by typing in the IP address of your tuner. Once it's added, you'll need to set a few settings for Plex. Here you should choose antenna, your home country, and your postal code. The postal code is needed to download the EPG. Once you've set this, you will then see a list of channels we found earlier. You can scan again or even remove channels. However, I wouldn't remove channels here. I would create favorites later that we're going to set up. If you're happy with this list, click continue. Plex will start to download the latest guide and after a few minutes, you should see all of the TV shows that are available. The channel guide can be found in the live TV section. Here we can see a list of all the shows we can record and watch. This will look different depending on the client you're using, but the experience is mostly the same. The live TV feature is pretty self-explanatory. We can scroll through the channels, and when we see something we want to watch, we just click on it. This will start a live stream. From there, you could even pause or rewind a live TV show. Pretty cool. So you can see that I have a pretty good signal and the quality is really good, but what do you do if you don't have the greatest picture quality? Well, earlier I mentioned that we could check our signal strength for a broadcast to determine if we need to adjust our antenna or think about a signal booster. This might work differently depending on your tuner, but if you're using a silicon dust tuner like I'm using, the easiest way that I found to do this is to start a live show and then go to our tuner's homepage while the show is playing. Once here, go into tuner status and choose the tuner that's currently being used, which you can see in the summary. Click on the tuner that is in use and here you can see the status. The most important stat here is signal quality. The higher, the better. 
Now, if this is noticeably low and your TV stream isn't the greatest, you can try adding a signal booster or a line filter to try to clean it up. I will have links to this and all the other hardware we talked about in the video description. So, back to recording for the channel guide. After selecting a show, if you want to record a show, all you have to do is click the record button. From here, you can choose whether or not you want to record new airings only, new and repeat, and which library you want to save to. Now, you might have noticed that I have multiple libraries, TV shows, and recorded TV. That's because I wanted to separate the two, but it's totally up to you. It's as simple as creating a new library and setting the type to TV shows. Then you'll see this option when scheduling recordings. You also have some additional settings in Show Advanced, but we won't change them here. We'll apply these settings to all recorded TV here in a little bit. After clicking Record, we can now see that we have a record icon on the show, letting us know that it's currently being recorded. You also have lots of quick actions when hovering or clicking on shows where you can schedule a recording or even cancel recordings. It's pretty handy. One thing you might have noticed are the categories across the top. Now, most of these are self-explanatory. However, there's one named Plex Channels that's different from the rest of the TV channels. These are Fast Channels, or free ad-supported streaming television. It's streaming TV that can be watched at any time. They aren't channels that you can find over the air from your local TV stations, but channels that stream content 24-7. Like, for instance, if you want to binge watch Top Gear or The Price is Right Classics, there's a channel for that. But back to recorded TV. Once a show is recorded, it will be in your library you set for recorded TV. The default is TV shows. Once here, you'll see a similar experience that we see for movies. You'll have a recommended section, a library section, and a category section, and view controls for your media. Clicking on a show will bring you to that show, and from there you can see all the recorded seasons for that show. And if you want to get to your show, you click on the season to get to your episodes. Once you are on your episode, you can see more details about it like the date it aired, how long the recording is, the rating, and even details about the episode. You can also switch the track to another language and choose subtitles if the broadcast supports it. After clicking play, the video will start and you can watch it as you normally would. One of the best features that comes with live TV and DVR is intro skip and commercial skip. If enabled, Plex can detect intros, commercials, and even credits to help you watch more TV without interruptions. When playing a show where an intro is detected, you will see a skip intro button in the bottom right corner that you can click on and it will skip right to the show. This also works for commercials too. When a commercial break starts, you will see a button to skip ads, which if you click on it will skip right back to where the show picks back up. Now it's not perfect, but I will say it's pretty close for the shows that I watch. It's not enabled by default, so let's enable it. We can do this in our library settings, which you can find in the Manage section. If we edit our recorded TV library and go to Advanced, we should see a few settings here that help us skip unwanted content. Be sure that Enable Intro Detection and Enable Credits Detection is turned on, and then for the Ads Detection setting, you'll want to choose for Recorded Items. This enables ad detection for new recordings. Now, if you've already recorded TV with Plex or another TV, you can turn it on for all items to force a scan of all items in that folder. Awesome! So once that's turned on, it should now add these markers so we can skip unwanted content. Now this detection does take a few minutes and only starts after a show is done recording. And another tip, you won't see recordings in your library until it's done doing the detection. But after that, now we can skip through all of the unwanted content and watch TV like a pro. Like this show right here. If we start playing it, we can see it detects the intro and we can skip through it if we like. And then once we get to a commercial break, it will prompt us to skip that too if we like. And then if it detects credits, it will do the same. Now there are some additional settings you can choose for skipping commercials like removing them altogether. This is in the DVR settings where we can set our defaults for all new recordings. In the detect commercials setting, you could choose from disabled, detect, mark for skip, or delete. Now, I would recommend setting this to detect and mark for skip rather than setting it to detect and delete because deleting is a destructive action. And while Plex commercial skip is really good at detecting commercials, it's a lot safer to just add markers than accidentally delete part of your show. As for the rest of the settings here, I've only adjusted a few. I set the resolution to prefer HD. I don't replace lower resolution items and I do allow partial airings, and I don't adjust the minutes before and after the recording. Shows are pretty good at starting and ending on time, but if you find you want to record a minute or two after, just adjust this setting here. Live broadcasts that go over the scheduled time, like sports, 
might be a good reason to add some padding at the end of this recording so you don't miss overtime. Also, I enable a refresh on the guide data during the maintenance window, and for me, that's 2 a.m. So now that we've scheduled recordings, how do we make sure that my reruns of Nature and Nova don't get scheduled instead of my wife's show, The Bachelor? <laughs> you only make that mistake once. We can do this easily by adjusting our recording priority. If we go back to the live TV area and choose the DVR schedule, we can see everything that's scheduled to record, and on this far right, we can see the recording priority. This is where we can drag and drop to reorder our shows with the highest priority being at the top. This helps when there are scheduling conflicts due to the tuners being in use when recording or watching live TV. Now, I have four tuners, so I rarely have a conflict, but if I did, this is how I would choose to prioritize one recording over another. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to get in trouble again and prioritize nature over The Bachelor and Survivor, or even Big Brother. <laughs> I would just drag nature above all the other shows like this. This would ensure that if there ever was a conflict or not enough free tuners, nature would record instead of all of these shows. Okay, let's move that back before I get in trouble again. <laughs> now that we have everything set up, there's also this small feature to make your life a little bit easier when channel surfing, and that's favorites. As you can see from my list of local channels, I have a lot of channels that I almost never watch, but at the same time, don't want to remove them from my channel lineup. This is where favorites come in handy. I like to add all the channels I watch to my favorites list so I can easily browse them when I'm looking for something to watch. You can even add some of the Plex Fast channels to your favorites too. I really like the BBC Earth channel, PBS Nature, and the Modern Marvels channel, and I've added those to my favorites too. They have over 600 to choose from, so there's no shortage of content there. Now, if I switch back to my favorites, I can see a quick list of my favorite channels without skipping around through all the channels I rarely watch. Now, just because I did all of this from a browser and a TV doesn't mean you have to do it here too. Plex's mobile app works great for watching live TV, previously recorded TV, and even scheduling recordings. There have been so many times where my wife and I are out and about and hear about a new show that's airing soon, and now it's second nature to immediately schedule it to record. I just open up the app, go to live TV, search for the show, and schedule a recording. It's super simple and convenient to do for mobile. So that's everything you need to get started today to record live TV like a pro. I've been using this setup with Plex for years and it's everything I could want in a DVR system. From high quality over the air uncompressed video and audio, to an accurate EPG, to how easy it is to schedule recordings from anywhere on any device, to commercial skipping and so much more. I want to thank Plex again for sponsoring this video and you all for watching. <laughs> well, I've learned a ton about live TV, antennas, network tuners, and Plex, and I hope you learned something too. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.